The luck of the Irish was now on the side of Nebraska as the Huskers fell 31 to 28 to Northwestern in Dublin, Ireland. What was supposed to be a new look team in the end featured the same issues that had plagued the Big Red sometime under Scott Frost. With a must win game now in the loss column, how do they pick up the pieces and look ahead to the rest of the season? We'll unpack the game with our special guest, Fox Sports Kevin Kugler. Sean Callahan will join us with the latest on Big Red recruiting. All that and more next on Big Red Wrap. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael Severe, and welcome to Big Red Wrap-Up on Nebraska Public Media. As Yoga Bear, once, Yoga Bear has once said, it is simply deja vu all over again. We have seen this story many times. We are joined, of course, by former Oscar Jay Moore and Sean Callahan back from Ireland. I can name a number of games. Uh, 2019 Colorado, 2011 Northwestern. Lots of games that feel exactly like this game felt. Yeah, I was in Ireland, obviously, and it, it was... Just like, man, I've seen this movie before. As yeah. Scott Frost said a year ago in week zero when they lost. And, you know, it, it's like up 11. You're like, is this too good to be true? Right. Up mean, 11 twice. Because <laughs> you're asking your playmakers to make plays. Well, they did. They came out of the locker room. Garrett Nelson gets his first pressure, forces a punt. Um, then Casey Thompson makes the play of the game with yeah. that throw. And then you, you get the force fumble by Buford. And then the Anthony Grant run. You had four guys make plays there to get you the momentum. And they're like, now we're going to go to a kicker to try to onside kick it. I mean, it just, it, yeah, it, it, it was a tough way to go because so many people invested a lot of effort to get out there. And it was one of my favorite scenes I can ever remember. And I've been to every road game for Nebraska since 2000. Um, and, and that was uh, an unbelievable scene of people out there in Dublin. Confidence, obviously, is something. There's still a lot of players that have been around for the last couple of years on this team, even with the newcomers. They got to find a way to be able to get that right. It doesn't seem like they had it in the fourth quarter. Well, yeah, winning is a learning habit. So is losing. Losing is definitely a learning habit, and these guys are definitely in the in the losing habit. Yep. They and that's the coaching staff too. And I know we, obviously there's new there's new coaches, but the majority of the staff and these players they do not know how to win football games. Yeah. And that is plain and simple. There's no other way to to go to go about it. They have to a have their coaches make the right calls to put them in positions. Now we're going to get to the onside kick later, yeah, sure. but that's, I mean, that's definitely going to be discussed. <laughs> but you, you're, you have to rely on your coaches putting the best positions to win. But the players, they got to play with much better. They got to play with technique. You know, they have to do alignment, assignment, play with good uh, eye discipline. Yeah. Um, and I, obviously, being a defensive player, I look at the defense. They play poorly. You know, they, missed tackles. They missed tackles. So um, I'll break a couple plays down later in the huddle. Just poor technique. And just like, I, as a football player, I'm just. And it's by, it wasn't by the new guys. You know, I might give the new guys um, you know, a little bit of, you know, uh, I'll second guess them a little bit. But, you know, Nick Henrich, uh, Luke Reimers, yeah. they didn't play very well. They played with poor technique. Uh, Ty Robinson at times struggled. And it's, so it's, that's a little alarming. But the nice thing is they get right back at it They're at practice. Hopefully Mike Dawson, Barrett Root are getting with them and, and really getting on them. Let's go back to fundamentals. You can kind of get uh, lax a little bit towards the end of camp on certain things, mm -hmm. the travel and all those things. So they got to get back to the, the fundamental issues. But to you just got to almost – it's not too early in the season. I don't want to say just start over, but you got this – Man, we're going back to square gotta one. Flush it. Yeah, got to flush it, mm -hmm. and because all I do, they just know how to. They don't know how to win. Yeah, let's let's somehow figure out. You know, flush it, flush it out of your system. Let's just try to find a win somehow, some way, somehow. After one game, there's a lot to get to. We can't do without you. Reach out to the help of our conversation. Of course, the phones are up and running, manned by our students from the University of Nebraska's Journalism and Mass Communications program. They're joining us throughout the season, enjoying Valentino's Pizza and taking your calls. Put them to work tonight, of course, to help us out. You can also text and email your comments or questions to Big Red at Nebraska, publicmedia.org. Our eyes will be on social media as well. Let us know your thoughts as Big Red wrap up Facebook page or Twitter account, and we'll answer as many of your questions as we can. Don't forget to head to our website and download your copy of the 2022 Nebraska football schedule. The poster is right there. You can print it off for your home or office. And then, of course, keep up to date throughout the season with all the Husker football scores. Last week... We asked you which would be more successful this season for Nebraska. 60% of you said defense, remaining 40% split between offense and special teams. How does it change after last week? Well, our new sideline survey is up. It's updated, ready for you to vote tonight as well. Which was the letdown against Northwestern? Was it the offense 
Was it the defense? Was it special teams or play calling? Head to the website now and vote. As you see right now, 81% of the people say defense, even though special teams involved, of course, the onside kick. Everyone's talking about the punt literally heard around the world, so we thought we'd have that in our play of the game. Punt formation. Kicked off to the right. Captain for the team, a running back, grabs it and he gets it, and of course, Northwestern goes, takes the momentum, and goes down and scores right after that. Here's what Coach Frost had to say after the game. All right, Jamie, well, let's break it down. What, what did they see? Because they said they well, saw something. They, did, they definitely saw something. So if we can get this going here, this guy is there. He starts back. They have a guy right here. So obviously, there's a gap mm -hmm. right here where they want to kick this ball to. But the ball just kits a – it took a funny bounce. I see what they're seeing. Yeah. But my other, my other uh, caveat to this, so if Northwestern is going to do this, and they know that. They're, Fitzgerald's a really good football coach. Yeah. They know they're going to be at this gap. Guess what I bet you they're doing? They're probably practicing this scenario just in case it's to attack it. Yeah. So I think – listen, I see what they saw. But, again, the, the time, just the momentum, it was just – it was reckless. That's the only way I could put it. It was a reckless – irresponsible call. That's just no, it's, I have no other better way to put it. I see what they saw, yeah. but did it need to be done? Up 11 at that point in the game. You have, you're you not have, put you have away, the right? momentum. You have yeah. the momentum. You, you, it's just, I just don't, it is what it is, but you just, you know, you need to put it behind us here, but you, it's just, you can't, when we just talked about how hard it is to win football games. Yeah. Don't create another issue. I mean, momentum is such a hard thing to get in college football, and we had it. You can't beat yourself. Yeah. And we, we gave it right away. Gave it away. Here's what Coach Frost had to say about that play after the game. You know, at, the, at that point in the game, I thought all the momentum was on our side. I thought if we got it, we could end the game. Um, and it, the way we were playing, uh, you know, I, I felt at that point like, uh, like we had a really good chance of winning the game, and I felt like maybe we were the better team. And, you know, I, you, you can't really foresee them scoring 14 straight uh, and us sputtering after we'd played – well to start the second half on offense so again those are excuses if I had it over I wouldn't make the call. Sean what was the reaction like in the press box a lot of Nebraska fans what was that after it happened what was the reaction like? I mean it happened so quickly I mean you were just like wow Nebraska's changed this game around on these four big momentum plays they just made as an offense and a defense and they're like wait a minute they went for an onside kick mm -hmm. and you know even Pat Fitzgerald talked about it after the game and and said, yeah, we, we practice for that. And, and, and that we have our captain, our running back in the front. And the ball didn't travel 10 yards even. So we would have challenged it if they would have got it. Um, but he said, like, yeah. And another Northwestern player was asked, were you surprised? And he goes, no, it's Nebraska. You got to be ready for anything with these guys. Yeah. Here's the thing about it. And he said that they, he couldn't imagine them scoring 14 points. Well, they had done that already in the second quarter. They'd scored 14 straight points. Nebraska really never stopped them. They stopped themselves. They had the fumble. They had a penalty on one drive. They had a loss of yardage. So you figure Scott Frost has to be watching the game. He knows his defense isn't playing great. They're missing tackles. It seemed like a, just a dangerous risk that wasn't necessary. Oh, it, it, was, it was very unnecessary. You look at it at nine minutes left in the third quarter. You're up 11. You got the momentum. Mm -hmm. Kick it off, you know, if they you, it, somehow they mess that up, you pin them deep, they fair catch it, they get at the 25, you make them go 75 yards, eat up some time and eat up some clock. Mm -hmm. Then maybe they go down and get a field goal, guess what? You got an eight point lead, there's three minutes maybe on the clock going into the, going into the, going into the fourth quarter, and you, momentum's still on your side. I just don't, it was, it was, it was a rush. I just don't, I just, I'm still trying to comprehend. I'm always trying to find some sort of benefit of the doubt, and I cannot find one right. on this. Even though we looked at it, there was a, a gap there. But for them to do that, you know they're prepared because they, I mean, they got, they're smart coaches. They know that there's, there's an opportunity there to kick the ball right to the, the, the gap we discussed, but they were prepared. Um, you know, they're smart they players. Them. Yeah, they baited them. Yeah, they really did. Yeah. Really yeah. I mean, Northwestern, I mean, they're, they're smart kids. So it just was reckless. It was irresponsible to me. It's just, it's so puzzling just because how hard it is. I mean, if anyone should know how hard it is to win football games with Scott Frost and to, to rush a decision and just, I just don't, I mean, I'd like to know the discussion between the coaches, between Bill Bush and the rest of the coaches when that decision came up. Where was, I talked about <laughs> the, not having too many yes coaches on, on the staff, like challenging it. 
I would have hoped that all 15 assistant coaches, whatever there's on the staff, is yelling, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. But no one's, obviously no one spoke up. So, you know, you can put it on Frost, but you can also put it on the, all the assistants, too, for not speaking their mind. After that, Nebraska obviously still had a lead, still had a chance. The offense really bogged down after that. What happened to the offense in those last, I don't know, 20 minutes? Yeah, Casey Thompson got out of rhythm. Um, you know, Northwestern played him very basic early on, and they started to mix up their looks. They brought some pressure at him. Yeah. And I felt like once they confused him with some different looks and pressure, he just didn't have that same comfort level in the pocket with his throws and his release and his feet. Yeah. Um, after that throw he made that kind of turned the third quarter, he never really made that many throws like that the rest of the way down the stretch. And then Anthony Grant, too, the running game just never took hold. They have to get the running game going this week. Um, and, you know, Scott Frost kind of took a jab a little bit at what they did. He said, like, we got to – maybe be a little bit more exotic with how we try to run the ball. We're not necessarily good enough to run traditional pro style handoffs and, you know, plays basically that everybody knows what's coming. And, and Nebraska was not moving Northwestern at the line of scrimmage, even with um, unbalanced looks they were coming out with. Yeah, we've seen this a lot of times, another one score loss. We've seen a, so many, I think it's seven in a row of them, nine uh, under 10 points. You mentioned earlier, they got to find a way to win, but this is incredible that they could go through this kind of stretch. It's it's mind blowing. You, I mean, three. What is the record now? Three and twenty-one after having, uh, they're at losing at half too. Yeah. You know, so it shows that they make no adjustments. You know, no adjustments in the second half. Um, there's just it's 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 crazy. Seven straight losses. I mean, it's all. It's you just go down the list, and it's just it. You're surprised. You, know, you seem surprised, but yet you're like, oh. It, it kind of just is you've what it is. It. You know, you've seen it before, and it's just, it's a, that's what's so frustrating is because what's, you know, we talked about, you know, the, what's insanity? Keep doing the same things over and expecting over and expecting different result. results. Yeah. And there's and there's another definition of that, Jay, and it's <laughs> doing the same thing over and over and expecting the person who got you in there to get you out. Right. Yes. That's said another that one. That's a military that's one. That's a military. And we are expecting the people who put them in this position. Now some new ones added in, mm -hmm. but to get them out of this. <laughs> the worst part about this, <laughs> it took away a great stat. If they would have beaten Northwestern, it had been the first time they had consecutive wins against the same team since 1954-55 when they beat Iowa State. That would have been a great stat. We lost that stat because they didn't beat Northwestern. <laughs> uh, positives, though. Casey Thompson did look good for three quarters. You can see he has the ability to win games. Anthony Grant made those guys miss on the long run. There was some positives from the offense. I mean, I thought Anthony Grant could have been the best running back on the field at times. The way he, I mean, that run he made, that great cut. Run. That was a, maybe the best run we've seen from a back at Nebraska since Divino Zigbo. I mean, they, they haven't, and Maurice Washington, they, they just haven't had guys make those moves like he did and then finish it off, especially against a defense like Northwestern that traditionally doesn't allow big plays like that very often. But, yeah, Casey, you know, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda was such an unknown commodity because we didn't see him in the spring, uh, but he's the real deal. And Trey Palmer, I think, is a very talented player. Um, so they've got weapons and vocal like guys. I mean, he, he was a difference maker when he was in there. Um, you know, that that offense looked different when he came out of the game. They lost that safety blanket Twice on third and long over the middle. Big catches across the middle. Yeah. Uh, defense. It's hard to really find any real positives. Yeah, um, I don't I didn't expect them to get pass rush because it's a really good offensive line by Northwestern, but they weren't really creative either to try to get some plus pressure. Yeah, It was interesting. Their their game plan Northwestern's game plan offensively. I mean, it was it was smart. I mean, they it was a lot of quick. I mean, they got the they established a run. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted to do. We had to talk about that last week. That's what they, we thought they were going to do. And then they just got their play action, and they got Hels Helsinki out of the pocket, and um, uh, and they you know made some plays, made some catches. But when you get on your on your heels against a run game, and it's, it's it gets it gets tough, you know, and you start second yourself as a defensive lineman. And if the offensive line does give you know they they hide the protections, you know their mm -hmm. their play actions, you know they're good, and, and we just struggled to transfer into that. But I mean, they, could, they, they probably got a first rounder on the so offensive Ronsky. line, yeah. yeah. So I mean, and the other kids are draftable yeah, player too. Yeah. Both of them. But are. it just it, the frustrating thing is, and I've already alluded to this, is you know our, our players that should be playing well did not play very well in my opinion. And mm -hmm. the team they, they looked a little tired at times. You know they had those first game kind of uh, the, the legs looked a little sluggish. So mm -hmm. rather rather frustrating out of some guys who who have played really good football um, and did you know. Didn't show up very well on, uh, on Saturday. It's time to rip the Band-Aid off and look at the highlights from Saturday's game in Ireland. 
it actually got off pretty well for Nebraska. The start of it looking good with Casey Thompson kind of on fire. Starting off with a guy you knew they'd target a lot. They get the ball to Trey Palmer getting outside. Um, that is a, that's a great game there of nine yards. And then Casey Thompson continued in the rhythm. Here he is hitting Marcus Washington, another transfer. The kid that came along with Casey Thompson from Texas, another 15 yards there. And this throw, you give your guy a chance, right? Absolutely. And he went up and got it. Give it to where he can you know, throw it to the outside. And again, we just we didn't know much about him. And uh, we know a lot about him now. That kid can play. And you knew Mark Whipple was going to come out with a great script, and he did. Ryan Alinsky had some really great moments at South Carolina. I don't know he was ever this good at South Carolina. He started off absolutely on fire, hit his first eight passes, didn't have a complete an incompletion until the second quarter, just constantly moving them down. Now, he did get bogged down, had to settle for a field goal, makes it 7-3, a nine-play, 35-yard drive right there. Casey Thompson continues his rhythm that he was in here with a deep pass across the middle. We mentioned earlier, Sean, Travis Volkolek, high snap. This is an incredible play by Casey Thompson. Yeah, he saved that. You know, Adrian Martinez has been in that spot before <laughs> many a times, and, you know, we didn't see a throw like that. I mean, the way he bailed that play out, that was a you – know, we saw that a couple of times. Back to his main target, Trey Palmer, and then after a couple of runs by Yant where they couldn't get in, Casey Thompson takes it himself. His one rush on the day is a touchdown. 14-play, 80-yard drive to go up 14-13, up 11 right there. Did not try an onside kick. Ryan Linsky comes back, deep pass to his tight end. Uh, it's 23 yards down to the 48-yard line. And then this is a busted coverage, right? Yeah, you said guys, I mean, again, they alluded to the play action pass. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Buford just got caught looking in the backfield and just got sucked up, and they were able to run that guy around the back end of the secondary and just snuck him through, and, and uh, six points for the Wildcats. A lot of physicality from the Northwestern team, but also look at speed. Here is um, a running back, a big running back being chased, and Heinrich couldn't run him down uh, in that situation. And then Ryan Helensky again with another play where he makes a perfect pass over the middle, touchdown. Getting ready to go to half, but Nebraska still has a shot to go down and get some points. And you know what? Casey Thompson made some really big-time throws. That's a great throw across the middle to get him down. And then this throw on third down and three, that's a nice throw. Mm -hmm. They add a second back to the clock, giving Nebraska a chance, have a chance with a long field goal kicker, and it's just a little right. Yeah, Frankie got it there, though. Mm -hmm. He's got he's the long guy, obviously, and Bleak Road is, is the, the inside 50 guy. Makes a lot of sense. Casey Thompson comes out in the second half, again playing well. This is Travis Vokalek's last catch. Five catches, 63 yards. He is day-to-day, day day, according to Scott Frost. Casey Thompson, the play of the day. Um, incredible. He's going to run. I'm not going to run. I'm going to turn around. Isaiah Castaneda raises his hand. He said he saw him raise his hand. He throws it up there. And then this is a nice move to get some extra yards as well. I think they thought Casey was in a green jersey. They just didn't want to touch him. <laughs> they didn't want to touch him. <laughs> 25 of 42 for 355 yards and one touchdown, passing and rushing. And really, he had a bad fourth quarter. Casey Thompson could have had a huge, really huge day if he had a better fourth quarter there. Had a lot of drops to at least six drops. Uh, here's Anthony Grant getting his uh, touchdown. That makes it 21 to 17. Nebraska back in control of the game there. And this is a big play. Marcus Buford makes a great tackle here on Cam Porter. Cam Porter gets down the field, fumbles it. He went 19 for 94, by the way, with a touchdown. And look at the luck. And Sean, the it stays in bounds. Yeah, that's because so many times, like think about Ohio State last year. Yep. I mean, this fumble has not gone Nebraska's way. So we're saying make plays. Well, then you get a play right here from Anthony Grant. You had four, guy, four or five guys make plays here to get Nebraska back up 11 points. 46 yards right there to take the lead. 28 to 17, up 11 again. And then here's the play we've talked about a lot. It's your onside kick. If you don't want to watch it, I suggest just close your eyes and not watching it again. But here it is, kicked right to one of the captains, a running back who I know at Northwestern is a smart kid. Easy recovery right there, Sean, and the it. momentum goes. He just tried to aim it versus kick it. You yeah. know, he didn't get anything on that ball. And, you know, it wasn't even a, a play. There was not, nothing there. It was, yeah. Didn't even have a shot there. I mentioned Ryan Alinsky had a great day. You can see that here. 27 of 38 for 314 yards. He had two touchdown passes as well. Cam Porter, here's his touchdown on the day. Had a really good day. I mentioned that earlier. That was five plays, 44 yards after the onside kick. But Nebraska still has a shot. Casey Thompson makes a pass across the middle that almost got intercepted to Borkature. Then he makes this throw. Oliver Martin... 
He was held up a little bit, but he was held up a little bit. But he's got it. He's either got to knock the ball away or catch it. They did. They really did let him play. There's one pi call, and, yep. and it was to Nebraska's benefit. It, got it was kind of a break. Yeah, it really yeah. was. Touchdown there from Hall. Really, it looked like the defense was completely smoked at that point. Had nothing left um, after that touchdown. And then Casey Thompson trying to drive to get the field goal to tie. Ball bounces off the hands there, um, goes into the air, and it is an interception. You look at the stats. Uh, 528 yards for Northwestern. Nebraska only had the one penalty, but of course they had the three turnovers. Um, overall, Nebraska played well, but Northwestern just outplayed them on this particular day. Time for plays of the game now. We've got a pair of offensive transfers making the play. Uh, Casey Thompson and Isaiah Garcia Castaneda both had huge days. Uh, Castaneda with 120 yards receiving, 44 after contact and catching the ball and then Casey Thompson as well with a huge day as we've talked about pretty much the whole show. Now it's time to go inside the playbook. Jay Moore joins us with the huddle. All right, we're going to break down a couple plays defensively that uh, we've talked about, you know, just from formation issues, lineman assignment issues, technique issues. But first I got to give a shout out to Husker Fast on Twitter. He wanted a couple of these plays to be shown, so we're going to hook you up and, uh, and break some of these down for you. So this is the play where you saw with Buford causing the, causing the fumble. But when it comes to football, it's a simple math um, issue. You know, it's, it's 11 versus 11, but obviously with the odd number, you're going to get some, some times where the math is not on your side. And defensively, obviously, you'd like to be four versus four, five on four if, uh, if possible. But as we look here, we count them. Hope you guys like my penmanship. That's about as best I could do on huddle. Uh, we have our four. We have their four. You don't usually you don't count the run, uh, QB in in the run game. So as we go and snap here, I want to focus on Ty Robinson right here. Now he's in a tough position. He I don't think does a good job. He's kind of catching the block here on the guard. Now I believe he probably has a gap responsibility. He's head up there on what we call a, a, a two technique. And what is going to happen here is this, this uh, tackle is just going to come down and hammer his hip. So essentially, Ty Robinson here gets knocked all the way to the other side. I mean, he is completely on the other side <laughs> of the center now. He just got washed out of the play. Now, essentially, in this situation, now we have our three guys. Ty Robinson is completely gone. We have Garrett Nelson. I think this is Reimers, and this might be Newsom, I believe. Now it's a three versus their four. They have one two, three, four, we have three. We're in a, we're in a, a lose-lose situation. There's not much anybody can do here because Garrett could have spilled and it would have bounced, and it, but luckily it works out here. Nebraska gets lucky, but this was a constant issue defensively. Now, I love, absolutely love getting these end zone copy views. Nebraska kind of comes out in a, in a, a different look, um, but as we snap here, it was a hit play. I'm gonna pause it. They are actually in a really good situation, but I'm going to focus on these three guys, Heinrich, Feist, and um, Reimers. These three guys kind of where the play breaks down. So as, we, as I fast forward here, Feist is doing a decent job, but this I want to focus on. You can't, I don't know if you can see this or not, but Heinrich is coming up here with his, with his uh, forearm and shoulder. He is not using his hand. So when this happens... He is not able to get off. Usually if you're in a good situation, you're using his hands, he can throw that guy almost to gap it and come back and make this play. But Feist is in a, is in a tough situation here. He gets, they have a dual block. He comes off on him. He gets knocked out of his gap. He can't come back. And I don't really know what Luke Reimers is doing here. He is too good of a player just to run up here and throw himself into this situation. High pad level, no hands. He gets stuck in here. If he was in a, a decent position, he could have bounced back and made this play right here. But I'm not really sure what he's doing. These two, you know, these two players have played a lot of good football, and uh, they didn't really play very good in this game. So then all of a sudden, boom. You know, now you got the running back running, and uh, unfortunately, that was, there was a lot of that. So hopefully they can get all these issues. They're all very correctable issues, in my opinion. But when you play good, a good uh, offensive line, you know, like uh, Northwestern, they're going to expose you. So not necessarily effort, more about discipline. You seem like on those plays, uh, discipline and just yeah, it's just just technique. And you get tired, you get you start playing a little higher. You start you know if like Ty Robinson kind of came off the line and established himself in a catch, all of a sudden he can't get that angle on his hip. Mm -hmm. He's not getting knocked all the way over there. But that's what happens. You, he kind of caught the block and and wasn't physical enough, and boom, he got. <laughs> he got, he got it's, 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 it's not for the faint of heart down there. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not easy by any means, but uh, he's too good of a player to have that happen to him, in my opinion.
Next up on the show, we'll be joined by a friend of the show, Fox Sports' Kevin Kugler. As we go to break, more sights from the international game in Dublin, courtesy of Hale Varsity. Stay with us. We're back soon. We know we got to get it done this year as a staff, the team, but it, that doesn't matter. I, I want this for the kids, and we got a great bunch of kids that believe in themselves right now and, and feel like they have a lot to prove. This one is emotionally hard because, you know, we put that grind in, and I feel like this team right here was like, I feel like this team right here is like, man, we the one, like the one to bring Nebraska back to where it was. So it's hard. But like I said, I take full responsibility of that and coming with that, we got to get back to work. We're going to be fine. We just have to move forward. We can't let one game beat us twice. Um, like I said, today's Tuesday and the game was, you know, two days ago, three days ago. So we have to move on from it. Yeah, I, I'm excited. We got a lot of players that never played in Memorial Stadium. I know it's going to be a special experience for them. Again, I can't uh, thank the fans that went to Ireland enough. Um, this is a neat team. I know the fans are going to be there to support them. Uh, don't give up on this team because this is a this is a neat group of kids, and I know uh, Husker Faith will be out to. Support. We're pleased now to be joined by good friend Kevin Kugler. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing? Hi, Michael. Hello, Jay and Sean. It's a pleasure. Stop me if you heard this before, but Nebraska starts another season 0 and 1. It doesn't happen a lot, but um, what is your feeling? Um, and what do you think the national feeling is for Scott Frost in the hot seat? Is, is it a real thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, there, there's no question. It's absolutely real. Um, and we all knew it coming into the season, depending on what you would do, what kind of start you'd get off to, how this was going to play out. And and this was, this was not the start anybody around here wanted to see, and it's certainly not the start that they wanted to see down at South Stadium. Uh, not a great start, to say the least. And the problem becomes, when you look at this schedule – and you realize six wins get you to a bowl game, you've now got to do something that maybe is unexpected to get to six or seven wins in this season. And I'm not sure what the benchmark will be for retaining Scott Frost as the head coach at Nebraska, but Saturday in Ireland didn't help that process. Kevin, you obviously spent a lot of years with the BTN around a lot of people that know this league well. When you talk to them about Nebraska, what was always the feeling why this wasn't getting over the hump under Scott Frost? Well, I think there's a couple of things, and one of them is that Nebraska is rather predictable from this standpoint, not because predictability and what they're going to do necessarily, 
But the one thing that always comes up is if you keep Nebraska it within arm's length, Nebraska's probably going to do something to screw it up. And we, we've seen that time and time again over the course of the last several years that Nebraska tends to screw something up when they are in a tight game. You, you don't lose all of these consecutive games that you guys were talking about in the opening segment. And you don't lose those by being smooth, disciplined, having everything go your way. At some point, the luck changes, but at, at some point, it's not luck. At some point, it's consistent problems that keep cropping up that create issues for you and keep you from winning football games. Fox Sports' Kevin Kugler joining us here on the wrap-up. Which loss is worse, Illinois 2021 with that veteran team with a bunch of six-year seniors or the one that just happened on Saturday? I, I, I really I know what you're saying with the Illinois game and all of the veterans. I really do think it's this one. I mean, this is the this is the game that Nebraska was hoping to say, look, we fixed everything. We, we brought in new coaches. We've got a lot of new talent. And there's talent at these skill positions. I, 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 we saw it on Saturday. It's a talented quarterback. You have talent at wide receiver. The run game, as you guys talked about, is an issue, although you saw flashes on Saturday. The Lions obviously have some work to do. But I, I really do think this game was the most disappointing. I, I scratched my head because, you know, I, I still live here, and I, I read – a lot of the pundits who would argue about, well, is the Oklahoma game more important or is this game more important? This was the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had the entire national stage to yourself. You were the only game of the day. And if you saw the ratings, the yeah. television ratings were off the charts on Fox for this game. It was huge compared to week zero last year. The eyes of the college football nation were on this game. And Nebraska laid the egg again and, and to me that's why this was such an important game you had a chance to come out and really make a statement if you're nebraska you had a chance to come out and say we're fixed things are better this is a different program and what you did was you came out and said this is the same thing just with different people in different uniforms now it doesn't mean it can't be a successful season it doesn't mean great husker fans like you know my mom or jerry and marcia peterson are gonna say no we're out but <laughs> You're going you're gonna to have some work to do to get to that point where people start to feel confident that things really are going in the right direction. Kevin, what was your level surprise when the onside kick happened there? What was, was how? <laughs> I mean, all of us was, it was this. It was uh, very, very. We were all surprised, but what was your level of surprise of that decision by Scott there early in the third quarter? flabbergasted uh, there was no good reason for that to occur I, I couldn't believe it now now look I spend most of my weekends watching NFL now and you just don't make those kind of decisions it's a very you know there's a lot of things in that league that are very different from college football but it's a very conservative league you're just not going to do that in the third quarter especially when you appear to have grabbed momentum I was stunned to see it I sent a few text messages to uh, to some people who I knew were watching the game to express uh, my surprise at what had happened <laughs> during that moment. And you just knew because, you know, look, I, I've been a Cub fan for a long, long, long time. <laughs> when they have things go wrong, you know it's not going to go well for them as the game progresses. Well, Nebraska's kind of getting into that position right now where you recognize that, oh, that's a turning point that's not going to work out well for the Huskers as this game progresses. And, of course, it didn't. You were obviously covering this team when Frank Solich was fired, uh, which was divisive, the split fan base. By bringing Scott Frost back, it allows him kind of to fire himself. Like, if it doesn't go well, Trev really doesn't have to make that tough decision that he would have had to make after last year. Do you agree with that? You, you really had, I think, the one choice in this, and that's what Trev did. Trev came back and said, let's give the native son a chance to make this thing work as best he can. And, you know, you retool the buyout. You lower that number. You do exactly what you have to do. But then you give him an opportunity. Again, when he was signed as the coach, not anybody said that was a bad hire. Not one person. I, I'm, if you're the person who's like, oh, I, I knew it wasn't going to work. <laughs> no, you thought he was a good hire then. Everybody thought he was a good hire. He was the hot coach in college football. And, I, and you give him a little rope. And you now hope that that can be turned around as the course of this season goes along. I, I don't know that it can, but you're going to have some time to figure it out over the next couple of weeks. You, if you if you struggle in each of these next two weeks, and I think they'll get off to a slow start this weekend. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, there's a bit of a hangover. There's jet lag. There's all the stuff that's involved in what happened last week. I think it's a slow start. They'll win. They should beat Georgia Southern. 
And then the Oklahoma game comes up, and it's a chance to show what kind of progress you've made. Kevin, how surprised were you with the line of scrimmage play for Nebraska, particularly on defense? I think that was an area that people expected to have some wins up front, and they had no wins for the most part up front in that entire game. That, that might have been, Sean, my biggest surprise in watching that because I – foolishly had higher expectations for that and you know I, I thought it was going to be and maybe it still will be again this is one game and I, and I hate saying mm -hmm. you know oh let's write off all these guys after one game because I don't think you can do that and if you do that it makes for a very long fall because we aren't even to September yet and you're already writing off this portion or that portion but I did think it would be a little bit more of an even matchup up front with Northwestern and I was very surprised that you just didn't see any consistent pressure. You didn't see any pressure really at all. You didn't see any consistent push. That really surprised me from an area that I thought would be better than it was in week one. Now, they're going to have a couple of weeks, again, to work against some undermanned opposition and work on some things before they get that next real big test against Oklahoma. Look, I, I know if you had to, you could call the color part of a broadcast, but you're a play-by-play -play guy. Scott Frost has had his play-by-play -play taken from him. Do you think he'll be able to make the adjustment and just allow someone else to call the game? I, I really don't know because I do believe that the decision to make the onside call was in part because he wanted to really put his impact on this game. And I think it's hard for somebody who has always been involved in having the wheel in your hand, whether you're a quarterback, whether you're a coordinator, whether you're a coach, mm -hmm. the head coach, that's hard to just give up and cede that to someone else. I don't know how he's going to manage that on game days because I would imagine game day is the toughest. All week long, you're immersed in game prep. You're immersed in practice. Everything's moving fast. But on game day, you're just kind of there making – decisions like kick an onside kick after you've grabbed an 11 point lead with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. That's the part where I think you really see him missing the role that he has carried for a good long time, whether as head coach or offensive coordinator. And I think that's going to be the hardest thing for him to come to terms with. And if, as, as little as Scott ever says in the media, mm -hmm. he has hinted at that more than once yeah. that that's going to be, a bit of a challenge and an adjustment. So if he's saying that, just imagine how big of an adjustment this actually is for him. I guess the fear is, and because the tickets are already sold, so the sellout streak is fine, but people not going or leaving the game early, that's always going to be the concern for an AD, for a president, for an athletic director, for everybody. Oh, I'm sure it is. And, and look, had they won against Northwestern, they would have left the game early on Saturday if Nebraska had beaten North Dakota by 30. So I, I don't put much stock into the fact that late in the third or fourth quarter, you're going to see big pockets of empty seats at Memorial Stadium. I, I People will show up on Saturday. I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. It's the first time in months everybody's been able to get together, tailgate, hang out, enjoy a beautiful Saturday afternoon, watch some football, be with your friends. You know, my daughter's down there. I know she's not going to shy away from the game just because they – didn't get the chance to win a game in Dublin, Ireland. Mm. They'll still be there and tailgating in full effect, and I won't ask, and hopefully she won't tell. But <laughs> the the whole situation will be what happens as the season goes along and what's the mood around this team. For me, you can look at what happens on Saturday if you want, but I really believe the Sea of Red will be there just like it would have been regardless of what happened. Had they won that game, people might have been more excited but they're going to show up because it's the first chance to see the Huskers at home. And, you know, that's that's what we do in this state. We go and we watch Husker football. And then on Sunday, we watch Kevin Kugler call games on Fox. Hopefully, if they're airing here, where do you start the season? I was going to say, you're not going to see me this Sunday because I will be in my uh, in my basement right. hiding, preparing. <laughs> uh, no, we start in Tennessee. We've got Giants, Titans, and then we get the defending Super Bowl champs the next two weeks, uh, Atlanta Rams and uh, Rams Cardinals. So good start to the season. Plus, you get a little benefit of maybe going overseas as well this year? Well, you never know. I mean, let's hope so. We're crossing our fingers. That would be awesome. Kevin, we appreciate, as always, coming on with us, and, uh, and have a great weekend. Thank you, gentlemen. Good to be with you.
All right, it's time to take a look at the best of social media. It was pretty rough out there after Saturday's loss, but here are a few diamonds in the rough. First up, you've seen this meme floating around Facebook, I'm sure. It shows Husker fans before and after the loss against Northwestern. For sure, the feeling many fans can be summed up in this vintage vi version of Herbie. Uh, then next up, we go over to Twitter. It felt a little bit like Groundhog's Day. We mentioned that. It's pretty much the same thing that's happened multiple times over the course of the last few years. And finally, former Husker Levi Falk is having some difficulty settling to his new position of just watching the games rather than being a part of them. It is stressful for us as well, Levi. I completely understand how you feel about the whole thing. We also have our winner of the game day photo contest, Ryan Evans. Congratulations. Sent this drone shot of his crew as they watched the game on Saturday stateside. Thanks for sending that in, Ryan. Of course, don't miss your chance to be able to send us your best game day photos for a chance to win great prizes throughout the season, like this Nebraska Public Media Sports Crew t-shirt. We want to see your game day best. So make sure you send those photos. First home game photos, it's going to be great. Send from your tailgate, the game inside the stadium, or if you're at home, in your man cave as well. Next up, some good news. Sean and I will dive into some recruiting updates as we look ahead, of course, to North Dakota as well. But first, another look at this past Saturday's games with images courtesy of Hale Varsity. Welcome back to Big Red Wrap-Up. I'm Michael Sevier, Sean Callahan joining me, talking recruiting. Bad news on Saturday, obviously, with the loss, but leading up to the game, a big get for Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska got Cameron Linhart from IMG Academy, uh, commit number 14, an edge player. Uh, he's the captain, Michael, of IMG Academy, 6'2", mm. um, 230, New York native. Uh, clearly a Mike Dawson guy all the way. He looks 24. Yeah, he is. Easily. <laughs> um, but he's a leader, strong edge player. Yeah. Mike Dawson really felt he's a Big Ten type of player. They had another guy committed there, Ashley Williams, and he kind of jumped the line when they already kind of had Cam, Le Cam Lenhart in. Mm -hmm. And so Ashley Williams decommitted, and then it opened things up to get Cam Lenhart's commit official. Uh, they only were going to take two edge players in this class with Maverick Noonan and Cam Lenhart. And then obviously the potential to take like another transfer portal guy, um, but they love his physicality, the way this guy plays. Um, no doubt a, um, a big time addition uh, for commit number 14. It seems like they're kind of stuck though between what they're looking for. 6'2", 230, it's a good size for an edge, but at the same time in this system, it'd be nice to have a 6'4", 6'5 guy on the edge, but yeah. not a lot of those bodies out there. Well, you're right. I mean, I, I, I think 
you, you strive for that, but they want football players. I mean, yeah. look at Ohio State's front. Like, a lot of their guys aren't that tall. I mean, they have football players. Yeah, sure. And I think we've seen Nebraska recruit the measurables, and how's it going for them right now? I mean, right. I think they saw this guy, and they said football player, leader, captain. Um, they, they, they want this kid in the program, and he's playing at IMG Academy, so they know that he, he's, in, he's played a pretty high level right now. We've seen all the pictures of Malachi Coleman in terms of all the offers he's got. He's laying in the tub with everything and all the magazines. What do you think ends up happening with him? Yeah, Malachi Coleman, um, I believe his commitment date's now going to be in October. Um, he was going to announce in December. Um, but I really think Nebraska and Oklahoma are the, are the teams to beat. Um, you know, he, he had USC and Michigan and some others on that list. Um, but, you know, Malachi Coleman, a wide receiver, a guy that could play here in tight end. Um, you know, he's played one high school game so far this year. Um, sounds like he's hurt right now. He made yeah. an announcement that he's hurt, um, dinged up. Uh, they lost their opener 14-6 to to Kearney. Mm. Uh, but we had a chance to watch him here at Nebraska 7-on-7 camp. And, I mean, he just makes it look pretty easy. easy. I mean, he, he's as physically gifted of an athlete, a 10-4 in the 100. Um, he's an elite 200-meter level runner, and he's also a, a very good basketball player. I mean, we haven't really seen it three-sport guy like this in the right. city of Lincoln in quite some time. And he could even even be an edge as well with his height just growing into it. Sam Sledge, of course, a commit to Nebraska from Creighton Prep. First time I saw him, he was a tight end. A couple of weeks later, he was an offensive guard. Now he's a tackle. Talk about him. Yeah, Sam Sledge, 6'5", 305, son of former Husker, all big eight, tackle Bob Sledge. Um, so a legacy guy. Um, I've known about Sam since his freshman year. He, yeah. he, first freshman, Michael, ever to start at Creighton That's Prep incredible. on the varsity level. Um, you know, he grew up, though, with Coach Tim Yonk as a ball boy at Gross when yeah. his dad was um, a coach with Coach Yonk there. And he's, he's, the, he's a coach's kid. I mean, and you look at this class, they've got three coaches' sons in, in the in-state coming to Nebraska right now. You've got Sam Sledge, uh, Ben Bramer, who's right. the son of Mark Bramer of Pierce, and then Gunnar Gatula, the son of Ryan Gatula at Lincoln Southeast. So uh, you've got a good in-state makeup of guys that have been around a lot of football. Uh, they like Sam Sledge, Michael maybe as a center. I mean, and I know when they've seen him over the summer at the camp, they, they were even more impressed with Sam Sledge where he was at uh, than they were expecting. They pretty much one more guy and then save all the rest for transfers, portal guys? Well, they've got a number of high school guys committed, but they would like maybe one more kind of elite okay. level. Right. And that Lance Hurd, um, who, who doesn't want the five-star tackle out of sure. Louisiana, right. um, that, that's who they're, I think, zoning in on right now. Bo Hewley was a name on there as well. Um, but, you know, it, it's weird to say, but they're, I mean, they're not done with 2023, um, but they have a good chunk of their bag full. I mean, they might want four more guys, five more guys, mm -hmm. and then the rest is going to be from the portal. Right. I, mean, I think you've got to figure out that right blend. And last year, that blend was 15, 15, and three. 15 high school, 15 portal, three JUCOs. Right. And what's that stock portfolio going to be this year? Are you going to, yeah. uh, you know, how many guys can they take? Um, you know, it's, it's wild. I mean, schools that have coaching changes, you could see 40 players coming into a school. I mean, it's, we had Nebraska 33 last year. Right, right. Right, no doubt. Sean, we appreciate it. Be sure to vote on this week's sideline survey. What was the biggest letdown against Northwestern? We gave you offense, defense, special teams, and play calling. 77% of the people say defense, which surprises me a little bit because I think play calling would involve the onside kick. So make sure you visit the wrap up website and cast your vote right now. All right, so North Dakota, I can tell you what I know. They only have five returning guys on defense. They have a quarterback that's not mobile, but he's pretty accurate. They have a running back who's a backup last year who's pretty good. Offensive line, it's pretty young. This is not a team that has a lot of experience coming back. Nebraska should be able to handle them. <laughs> should be, is should my key. Be. Why do I – it's just <laughs> – Why is that laugh? <laughs> <laughs> because we say that too often. Yeah, they, sh they should be, right? They yeah. should take care should've, of it. Should have, could have, would have. They should more. make the right calls at times. They should, but they just don't. And I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit of a, a, a grind early on. I just, yeah. I just do, just with the, the time change, school, everything, you know. Uh, but they should own the line of scrimmage. Yeah. You know, and it's just you take care. They have I mean, a speed just, advantage. The speed, you should, I mean, mm -hmm. they have a, they have a, obviously they have a huge advantage. There's a one double A football team. Yeah. You know, but we've, we've seen, we've, we've seen, seen crazy, very many wins. Well, yeah, we've seen crazier things. I don't, I mean. Hey, man, I, they, better come, they, they better come ready to play. Last time these two teams played, Sean? I can tell you. Right there. 
1961, September 23rd, gas was 31 cents per gallon. JFK committed to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. We all know that. Bill Jennings coached Nebraska final season before, of course, Bob Devaney came in and they shut out North Dakota 33 to nothing. Former uh, North Central Conference team, Kevin Kugler used to announce North Dakota versus UNO football games. Against UNO, back that's in the right. Day. When UNO had football, right. Yeah. This is one of those, though, Nebraska, even if they start off slowly, you get some guys, hopefully, backups to get some experience. Because I thought when the second team defense came in, I thought they struggled, especially in the secondary. Yeah, and you're looking right now where Nebraska came up short in the portal, inside linebacker, um, you know, I feel like once uh, Henrich went out with that injury or Reimer, one of those guys went out of the game, it's yeah, a big Reimer drop. had the cramps. It's a big drop off. Yeah. I mean, they. And, well, you got to bring in a, a freshman. And you're almost wondering, like, would they be better off with Kalarvik back in there as another guy if ha Hausman's not ready to go? Magua Clements, you know, is a little bit lighter for an inside guy. But yeah, that inside position with Snodgrass out as well, with an yeah. injury right now, they're, they're limited at that point. And that, that was concerning to me. Yeah, Kalarvik had one big play behind line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. It was a tackle for a loss. Really good one. But he struggles a little bit going side to side as well. He's yeah. not JoJo Doman, obviously. No, this whole team just uh, defensively, they look slow. They look sluggish. I, I don't know how the, the surface looked. Really, it was amazing. It was good. It was really good. Yeah. I know it's a soccer stadium. I know that sometimes the, the grass is a little different, but it looked it's tight. Grass, it looked, and there's also some Since, artificial yeah, synthetic. It was oh, the best grass yeah. oh, I've, very yeah. Yeah. Best best grass I've ever seen. You see it get chewed up a lot. I, right. I'm like, maybe Just it's Just the soft. referees <laughs> falling twice. You didn't have cleats on. It was slick. Yeah. But if you had cleats on, it was fine. some of the best but they grass. Looked, they looked sluggish, and that was that was very surprising. First game, you know, if it was game nine, game ten, and they've been through a grind already. But that's it's a little alarming that you saw the defense defense get gassed a little bit yeah. you know you just this is the freshest they're going to be all year is in the first game and but that I mean I don't I don't know uh, if Duvall needs to change some things up uh, getting the conditioning but these, these guys got to get in better condition although Marcus Buford said and I kind of agree with him that might be the worst they'll play all year on defense because mm -hmm. they're all new together they haven't played a game together you know full speed um, they were still trying to figure out Drew's only been on a campus what three four weeks if that long so Maybe if everybody's – the next two games, they can get it together and, and be ready for Oklahoma. Shenander was calling the defense in the corner. Like, yeah, it was tough. Right? I mean, he was in, like, in Memorial Stadium. It would be like the northwest corner of the stadium. And, you know, the angle he had and the look he had, it, it just – he wasn't set up very you well. You can't see substitutions like, coming in, that kind of thing. I almost was like, man, maybe he'd want to be on the sidelines. When he, when he pointed, he's like, I'm going to be in that booth with the Budweiser sign. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're going to call the game from all the way over. What if they're all the way – I mean, I just thought the setup for him was not ideal. Um, and, you know, not being able – but he wants to be up high. I get that. Sure. It, it just wasn't a, a good setup for him in the game day. Getting good news, great punting. <laughs> Nebraska did get great punting. Scott Frost said it's the best punting since he's been here. Machini did a heck of a job. Yeah, I mean, always got to find the positives, right? I'm looking for it. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, we, got, we need some positivity around here uh, every now and then. No miss extra points. They lost by three points. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're sitting here like they got beat by 50. Yeah, but they, again, they lost to a team that, and I know they it's should have won Vegas. the game. Yeah, they should have won. Favored by 13 or yeah. 12 or 11 or whatever. They were up by 11 points twice in the game. The spread was going to play itself out. I it mean, looked like it was, yeah. Like we were all kind of right on that number of 11 to 13. <laughs> on our picks right it was going to play itself out that way right overall special teams in general they still have an issue with kickoff return though mm -hmm. i don't know if they don't have the right person or they don't have the right plan well a lot of times so i've been on kickoff return teams and it's just a giant offensive play so there's timing that is involved and their timing is just not great you get there's you get too much space between you call you the returner and your backline guys you can't hold a block that long you mm -hmm. know it has to be yeah. has to be synchronized perfectly to where a catch he gets to run, you get the block, because you, you get a guy running full speed for 30, 40 yards at you, you, you just got to shield them off as long as possible. But if there's too much time between the, the, the next line and the returner, uh, the defensive guy is just going to make a miss. You know, he's going to defeat the guy, you're the blocker, and go make the play. So they have to get better timing, in my opinion. And, that, and again, that comes, you, sure. you don't do a ton of live kickoffs, kickoff returns in practice. That's you rarely oh, yeah, do that. So that they'll get better as it goes on. But no, it's been it's been sluggish. Yeah, I mean, when was the last time Nebraska returned a kickoff for a touchdown? Amir Abdullah? No, I think it would be JD Kenny Spiel. Bell, right? Kenny JD, JD ran a punt back. You kick off too? Yeah, he did. It was Okay. I remember the Kenny Bell one against Penn State. That sticks in my head. That was yeah, a long time that ago. That was long. Um Matt from Facebook. Is it development or is it recruiting when it comes to offensive line? You recover recruiting. What, which one is it? Unless they bringing the, enough talent in? I mean, I think they've. you look at the talent, Corcoran, Prohaska, and Ben Hart, 
those are the three highest rated tackles Nebraska's ever brought in in the online recruiting era. And it just had, I mean, all those guys have had their moments, but you know, they've brought in good material. I think offensive line is more about culture and development. Um, we've seen too many teams with three-star type guys. Wisconsin. And they and with Iowa. But the difference is the, the culture of those programs, you know, the players understand it takes three or four years to get to on the field. And the fan bases also understand that too. And they're okay with mm -hmm. developing where I think here there's more of a rushed feeling that if you're a five-star and a four-star, we got to get Jay Moore on the field now, right. you know, and at those other programs, I feel like at Iowa and Wisconsin, they don't rush those guys out there. They, they let them really develop. Thurman on Facebook says, why don't we blitz more out of the base defense? We won all our championships blitzing defense out of a 4-3. Six blitzes the entire game for Nebraska, according yeah. to Pro and Most Bowl of them course. were first half, right? Mm -hmm. So there were a gap blitz I know at so least twice. From 38 pass drops back, six blitzes. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see more plus pressure? <sighs> It's, it's, this one's a, a bit of an anomaly just because of the, the first game and just how Northwestern's game plan was. Mm -hmm. But y you have to have it. You have to dial it up. I want to see if O'Shawn Mathis, Garrett Nelson, and they can get a little more pressure naturally. Yeah. I want to see of that out of, out of their base. I think they should be able to. Now, Northwestern is one of the better offensive lines they're going against, but they still got it against Wisconsin. They still got it against Iowa. They got it against Michigan. Yeah. You know, so they're going to see much improved offensive lines. But I, I just want to see what they got. And I want, you know, I, I assume Chenander wanted to see that as well if they're able to create pass rush naturally instead of, you know, having to dial it up. Bill on Facebook wants to know about Ramir Johnson. Yeah, that, that was it. He was on special teams. I saw him out there. Um, so he was, you know, he was available. And I, I just think the flow of that game took on a weird identity, the way the back and forth nature of things. and um, But you still, especially when they had to throw more, he would have been a pretty good guy to have out you there. you expect Ramir and Omar to be back for this week? Uh, yeah, well, um, Ramir was out there this week. It wasn't yeah, like but I mean, actually playing, playing, carrying the ball, I think doing so. his job. I think he'll have a role. Um, Gabe Irvin surprised me. Um, especially Jack West wasn't running it very well. No, he wasn't. And, you know, you give him, like, two or three chances by the goal line and he couldn't get in there. I mean, that, that was disappointing. It's your burning question, Sean. My burning question is, will this look like what it's supposed to look like? It needs to. Mm. Jay? I want to see the defensive line come out and play better pad level, better physicality. They need to own that line of scrimmage and, and make a presence and not get knocked off and blown off the ball on double teams and play those better. Only one penalty this week. That's great. How about getting rid of the turnovers as well? No turnovers, no penalties against North Dakota. Don't forget to head to our website, Facebook page, to click on the prediction. Jay and, of course, Sean and myself will tell you exactly what I'll expect on Saturday. Nebraska looks to regain footing stateside as they open up Memorial Stadium for 2022 against North Dakota Fighting Hawks. Kickoff for that game is 2.30 on the Big Ten Network. Next Tuesday, we'll recap the game right here with Aaron Sorensen, deputy editor of Hale Varsity. More volleyball action as well comes your way on Nebraska Public Media this week as the number two ranked Huskers welcome in Loyola Marymount to the Bob. Of course, in the Sports Center, that matchup is scheduled for 6 p.m. Central right here on Nebraska Public Media. Our thanks to Kevin Kugler and also all of our student volunteers for the call center as well for joining us tonight. For Jay Moore and Sean Callahan, I'm Michael Severe. We'll see you next week on Big Red Rapids.